Hey, what's up? It's Tati and I'm back with another review, this time WWE Royal Rumble. And let me just say this, okay? I was sports entertained last night. Um, it wasn't perfect, but the road to WrestleMania is looking um, a lot better right now. However, there were certain things that I feel like that should have happened that they missed a huge opportunity with. And it's something that probably would not happen um, you know next year so let's start off with um before the pay-per-view a couple of hours before wwe posted a picture with 25 of the entrances in uh the royal rumble and i was like well why would y'all tell us you know so now it just left five spots where people can speculate who was going to be on and for me i was like sammy i want sammy to be in it and uh unfortunately he was not there so Another disappointing thing was the the whole layout that they had to the ring, like the entrance. It kind of reminded me of the Constellation, the Big Dipper. Like it was, it wasn't just straight to the ring. It was like straight, then going this way, then going that way, and then you go straight into the ring. It was not. Um, it, it was not friendly to a crowd. It's not crowd friendly at all. If I was in that arena in one of those seats where it was around the entrance i would be pissed the hell off because it just seemed so weird like you would literally have to watch from a screen you know i've been to plenty of wrestling shows and i've never felt um like i sat somewhere where i couldn't see well um but this right here this this design that they had was not working out for me at all didn't like it and i'm pretty sure other people did not like it as well the people who were there so on to the Royal Rumble match itself. I kind of was surprised that it was going to be the first match. I was like, uh, oh, the girls are going to be first. And well, they were not. So now we have, uh, starting off the match was Sheamus and Gunther. And to be completely honest, I was like, yeah, that's how you start the damn thing off. And they started off really, really well. And, you know, then we started getting more people. I think Miz was third. And then we had Johnny uh, Gargano, who was after that. And whoever else was coming out kind of got a little bit fuzzy. You know, it was 30 people to try to remember. Um, you know, we did have a alliance with New Day. We had the alliance um, with Dominic and um, what, what's his name? <laughs> I keep forgetting his name. Um, Damian Priest. And we knew that was going to happen and we knew that with one of those spots that was um not announced we knew it would be edge for sure um and edge was there and part of their focus was with edge edge actually came in at 25 now we also had brock lesnar i think he came in like 12 11 something like that and then he was cleaning house i'm like okay that's what he does cool and then right after him was Bobby Lashley. And I was like, okay, neither of these two are going to win this for sure. Obviously, for storyline purposes, them being so close, in, like back to back with their um, entrance into the Rumble, you just knew that they was going to get sidetracked. And that's something that happens a lot with these Rum um, Royal Rumble matches is that they get sidetracked when somebody that they're having you know a storyline with is in that ring then they're kind of forgetting the grand prize of it all and you know they're going against people that they have a personal vendetta against now for me some of my favorite parts was logan paul and ricochet these bastards are fucking crazy they both uh springboard on opposite sides of the ring met each other in the middle of the ring in the air and delivered a double clothesline and th that was absolutely beautiful and I was like you know what I'm not really for you know these influencers coming into the wrestling business and acting like they all for it or whatever but I really think he put the work in and it shows um to me and with that moment I think it was absolutely great everybody keep talking about Logan Paul did this Logan Paul did that and forget that Ricochet was also with him at that moment. It took them both to make that moment happen. And for whatever reason, people are barely mentioning Ricochet. But there was also another part of this match where Kofi Kingston, okay? I knew he was going to do another stunt, but it didn't end up happening. Um, so before he got eliminated, Xavier Woods had already got eliminated. And I think he grabbed one of the chairs, um the commentator chairs and put it in front of the um the table 
um, the commentator table and I think what was supposed to happen was Kofi was supposed to jump onto that chair and then do some crazy spot with him getting back into the ring. However, when he got on, it's one of those like chairs with the wheels so he could not get his balance and he ended up falling and hitting his head onto the announce table. So yeah, yeah, I don't know if other people caught that but I definitely did. Um, so nothing went on with that. You know, once we had Cody Rhodes at number 30, then I already knew what was up. I was like, fuck, um, Sammy ain't coming. And they missed a really big opportunity with that. Um, Sammy could have gotten in because, you know, they have that storyline where Sammy has to prove himself. If Sammy got in and really fought hard to win the damn thing and then he ends up having to go against Roman Reigns. Obviously he has both um, titles, so he has to go against Roman Reigns. And that would have been really, really cool to see. I think fans would have really liked that. For storyline purposes, it would have been perfect, but Cody Rhodes, I I'm not surprised that they gave it to him. This was a really, really great Rumble match. Not the best, but they added in a little bit of drama. They had a lot of nice little stunts here and there. Um, I really did thoroughly enjoy this match. Up next, we have uh, LA Knight versus Bray Wyatt in the Pitch Black match. Now, um, this is basically named after some Mountain Dew drink that just came out. And I'm going to say this, Mountain Dew's nasty. Moving on. This match right here is an absolute eyesore. And I'm going to say why. Now, visually, I, I think, so here's what happened. Obviously, they had a storyline getting into this, and the match itself was overshadowed by them trying to make things look cool, you know? So, was it pitch black? No. So, the lights were off. However, the ring and um, their clothes and their uh, face paint and things like that, like Bray Wyatt had, they had... Um, whatever some special uv um thing so that when it's dark they glow so they i feel like they focus so much on shit glowing that it took away from the match itself um so if you miss this you 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 good i didn't like this at all so um i felt like the match was, match was kind of rushed it felt like it happened really really quick i didn't really pay attention to exactly how long the match took itself but it felt really rushed to me and um there was a spot in this match where um bray wyatt he is on the announce table and um la knight does a i want to say an elbow drop onto um bray onto the table and it breaks now when the table breaks um what they had was these glowing yellow greenish balls inside so that when it broke it gave that effect of all the balls just releasing from the table i think it's supposed to look cool or whatever um to me it didn't i just feel like they just focused too much on it trying to look cool with all this glowing shit. so the wrestling itself was um very lackluster i do think that if you were in the arena watching this match live you probably had an issue watching this and you probably had to stare um at the screen so that you could really see what was going on so this wouldn't probably be an enjoyable match while um you're there live i did not enjoy this this was just not great at all uh, we did have wyatt end up winning this match via pinfall and um he went to the corner of the ring, put some glowy mask on. So once again, we're focusing on glowing and shit. And um, he runs after LA Knight throughout the arena. Um, they're out into the crowd and then they make it like towards the entrance or something where um, Bray just deliver a mandible claw and he falls down lifeless onto the ground. And then out of the blue, Uncle um, Howdy comes out. He's all the way up here and he drops down um onto la night and they fall into the abyss i guess and to be completely honest i was like oh wow this was not really all that i just did not enjoy it i really think that they was trying to do something um big and thought that it would be physical uh, like would be really um appealing to people i just feel like they really failed with that trying to focus on these gimmick matches i wouldn't even say this was a gimmick match i don't know we've never seen something like this before i just felt like they they just focused on the wrong thing i do not recommend this match 
at all. Right after that, we have Bianca Belair versus Alexa Bliss. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't give a damn about this match. Um, Bianca ends up winning, and I don't care. It just wasn't all that to me. I really wasn't focusing. They didn't really reel me into the match. I didn't really care. So let's move on to the Women's Royal Rumble match. Up next, we had the Women's Royal Rumble match. Now, this was an interesting one. I think from the very beginning, we already knew who was going to win. I forgot to mention that during the Men's Royal Rumble match, we did have Rhea come out um, near the entrance to um, assist uh, Damian and Dominic with beating up Edge. And Beth Phoenix came out and said, bitch, not my man, and speared her. And you know, she visibly was hurt. So I think they did this moment for one, storyline purposes, and two, um, to, I guess, sidetrack people to thinking that maybe she might not be 100% going into the Royal Rumble match. Now, she's number one. Liv is number two. Um, Liv was one of my picks to win this, along with Asuka. So I wanted either one of those two to win. Now, this match was actually um, not bad. Um, we did have alliances again, damage control, band together. Um, on Becky Lynch and other girls or whatnot. We also even had Michelle McCool who was like 20 something. Um, she's sitting out in the audience and she takes off her sweater or whatever and she's like hey I'm down for whatever and she gets in the ring and she was there for like 10-15 minutes or whatnot and I really think that that was a cool little moment. Um, another person who came into this match was Chelsea Green. Um, Chelsea I believe she's married to Matt Cardona uh, which most people probably know him as Zack Ryder. Um, people have been speculating that these two would be in WWE in the near future um, so her walk to the ring was longer than her stay in the Royal Rumble match itself. Um, that to me is like shades of you ain't going to be shit in WWE. They're, they're already showing you that right now. I just don't know why either of those two would have jumped ship to go to WWE. They've been really successful in the indie scenes, um, in some of these smaller promotions. And going to WWE, I'm sure the money um, sounds great, but what are you going to get with your career while you're there? Um, this might bite her in the ass later on. Um, one of the more surprising entrants was number 30, which was Nia Jax. I don't know if anybody was expecting this. She was released, I want to say back in 2021, when basically that now we know that that was during the time that Miss McMahon had to pay some hush money. So some people had to go. Um, so she was one of those people and she was really vocal about, um, you know, her time in WWE and how she felt wrong and all that thing. So I didn't think that she would actually be one of those people to come back at all. Um, so she's back and um, when she gets in the ring, all the girls decide to band together and get the biggest girl out of the ring. So she got eliminated and she's pissed the fuck off. So now... We're down to the last three, which was Rhea, Liv, and Asuka. And you know what? Asuka was my pick. I really wanted her to win. And if she didn't win, I was okay with Liv since the very beginning of this match. However, that did not happen. Um, the last um, five minutes or so of this match was really, really good. Um, these three really um, did a great job. At some points, we did see Rhea and Liv um, kind of band together against Asuka. And then at one point, all three of these girls were outside of the ring. I'm sorry, outside of the ropes. Um, so at any moment, any of them could have been eliminated. So then we have Asuka who sprays the mist. It was intended for Rhea, but it ended up up hitting um, Liv. So Liv is in the corner holding on to the ropes and she's crying boohoo blah 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 and now it's between Rhea and Asuka. But Liv is still in it. She's just crying in the corner. So now it's these two going at it. They have a really nice exchange and unfortunately Asuka was eliminated. So now we have Rhea and Liv and um, I'm still kind of hoping that she'll be able to pull through and win this because I just hate predictability. I did not want um, Rhea to win this. I know she's been really making a name for herself but you know everybody has their wants you know and she just not was not the one I wanted to win. She ends up picking up this win. 
so we'll be seeing her at wrestlemania and um this match wasn't bad i prefer that over the last two matches that was before that so both were rumble matches was great now let's get on to the main event which was just absolutely great all right y'all on to the main event roman reigns versus kevin owens now we really don't even need to talk about this match we already know the tribal chief won obviously um throughout this match we really had sammy who really wants to be um you know he wants to be down for the bloodline but he also does not want to get involved with um hurting kevin owens at the same time so i guess he wants to be fair but he wants to be down with the boys at the same time um throughout this match kevin he's being really resilient you know every time roman gets, gets him down he's right back up uh, we did have a part of the match where a referee is like dead for like five minutes so that obviously helps put the advantage for the tribal chief to win this match all right great he wins now the best part is what happens after this match so after the match you know the bloodline everybody about to celebrate and roman was like fuck the celebration keep whooping his ass so they jump on to kevin owens and then um after beating him up they handcuff him to the ropes now uh we have the tribal chief with a chair and he's about to just whack him with it while he's basically defenseless handcuffed onto the ring rope and sammy was like bro no no he is beaten up already he's defenseless he can't do a damn thing we've done enough it's cool leave him leave him alone tribal chief is like who the fuck are you talking to and then he goes you know what you hit him with the chair uh sammy's hesitating obviously he gets the chair and the way it was set up you know sammy's here roman is sort of in the middle here and then kevin is handcuffed onto the ring and um, you can kind of tell that, you know, he had a, a good opportunity to hit Roman with that chair, but also he also had the leeway to go hit Kevin with the chair as well. So it could have been either one of these two to where the way it was set up physically with these three. Anyway, Sammy ends up hitting Roman with the chair and the crowd is just, it's, it's absolutely crazy. So now... The other Usos are mad as hell and they start jumping onto Sammy. So it was Jimmy and Solo and they beat him up. Um, obviously Roman is upset, you know, he thought that he was down with the bloodline and all that stuff. So now while that's going on, we see our Usos, Jay in the corner, not getting involved. And he has this face, this look of disgust in his face. He he seems really, really angry about what's going on. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, he's literally not going to help at all. And I thought that um, this was a surprising way to go with it, especially given the history between Jay and um, Sammy. So I was like, you know what? This is a really great way of going about it. And at some point, the other Usas are looking at Jay like, you gonna get in here or not and he decides he's going to leave and he left the ring and then the others just kept beating up on kevin and sammy and they end up the uh show just like that and you know what i'm really interested to see where they go with this they actually got me interested in a couple of storylines this being their biggest storyline that they've been having for quite some time but moving into wrestlemania I, I just can't wait to see what happens. We already know that um, Roman is going to face Cody Rhodes. And where does that lead with Sami Zayn? There is still a bit of time before um, April where we do have WrestleMania. So there's a little bit of time to c still continue that storyline. But I really, really wish they would have did something with Sami and Roman at WrestleMania. Whether Sami lost or not, I think this would have been a great way to go with this storyline i did enjoy the pay-per-view there were some things that i didn't like which i already said um but the road to wrestlemania is looking 
pretty good and i think i'm gonna be checking in on the shows um every week just to see what they're what they're giving and and if i'm liking it and i'll definitely check out wrestlemania you guys thank you so much for watching my review i will be back with dynamite on wednesday bye